Uh, this is getting really, really close um, to kind of what we call a blow off top, not a blow off top that the market's going to go back to uh, its pandemic lows, just a blow off top that it's going to, you know, catch a lot of people uh, with their pants underneath their ankles. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Usually I'm off on Thursdays, but uh, since my daughter had a, a soccer game on Tuesday and I didn't get a chance to record there, I figured, you know, let me share my thoughts kind of where I think... <laughs> Is going on. Um, number one, I, first of all, last night, if you watched the video last night, we, we, we knew we were going to get a lot of value today. And the reason why we knew that, there was a lot of names that were consolidating on the bottom ranges or consolidating their really big moves that haven't really taken part in their second stage. So I kind of knew that. Second thing we kind of knew, the market is still in very, very big uh, speculation money mode. People are chasing stocks left and right. But what we saw today, um, you really kind of caught my attention and, and it will, what I'll talk about in a few minutes um, kind of is, is a little bit, um, you know, a little bit more of a, a cautious approach uh, kind of going into tomorrow. We're basically, you know, you hear the word parabolic, right? Um, and you hear the word parabolic, usually it's associated with some small, a uh, smaller float stock that has just, you know, just gotten absolutely nuts and there's no rhyme or reason behind it. And you can, you know, you can blame whatever outside forces what's happening with the name, but usually it, it's it's regulated to that, you know, to that one name that nobody's heard. You know, we're, we're at the point right now, since we've uh, reclaimed the 50-day moving average on the queues, that it all started out very innocently. You know, stocks started getting pulled up one by one, uh, earnings and tech names have you know been very very good. Even even when they uh, miss their numbers, quote unquote, on the surface after hours, they reverse course and start going higher. And we're at the point right now that we are now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen days. That's nearly three weeks, right? 14 calendar days, but uh, four, you know, nearly three weeks of trading that we've been gotten straight up. And what I've seen today, what I saw yesterday, that we saw the day before, uh, this is getting really, really close um, to kind of what we call a blow off top. Not a blow off top that the market's going to go back to uh, its pandemic lows, just a blow off top that it's going to you know, catch a lot of people uh, with their pants underneath their ankles and have their blinders on and believe everything is going to be okay. I'll buy the stock at any given price. The market will make me whole. Maybe you will, maybe we won't. And you know, a lot of times you go into the market every single day. And again, if you've been watching this broadcast, I, I try to remove names from the top, right? I try to remove names that have been running for five, six days in a row. Of course, I'll buy them on dips. And of course, I'll watch for sneaky channels, especially pre-market, that you could take advantage of a sneaky pivot. But the last thing I'll do is like chase or I don't want to use the word chase, but buy and attack the top of the channel after a four, five, six day run. And if you're if you're doing your chart work, and I, and I do my chart work every single day, and you hear me talk about it on every video, I try to buy, you know, I try to buy and focus the names that are coming off the bottom, not off the top. It's getting really, really tough now to find those names coming off the bottom, which basically means that we are really, really long the tooth as far as an aggressive move. And again, I don't know about you. And again, I, I could only speak for myself. If you're a believer uh, that the you know that the cues are going to go to 416 uh, to this measured potential move to the linear aggression line, maybe they do. Okay, maybe they do. And I, and I might be a day wrong, kind of getting a little bit more conservative going into tomorrow. But based on what I saw today on phenomenal moves, and we'll get to the pivots in a second, uh, epic, epic moves, right? Epic moves, uh, Google, uh, Google, NVIDIA, you know, um, uh, Amazon, Amazon was just a monster today. Uh, Tesla, Tesla up 16 is the new red, right? That, that's how strong this market is. So when you see these parabolic moves, 
chart after chart after chart after chart, and you say to yourself, well, where's the meat left in this bone? At least for me, again, I can always speak for myself. This is only my opinion. Like I've always said uh, in, my, in my course of thinking, i rather be a day early, right? A day early and miss the next trading day, or at least miss the bolt of the next trading day, uh, then be a day late and get run over by that uh, that train that you see coming. You just kind of you know look away, but you see it coming. You know you see the light coming, you see the tunnel coming, you see everything coming. You get out the tracks, get off the tracks, get off the tracks. You know what? I, I'll stay on the tracks for one more minute. Maybe it'll stop. It doesn't work that way. So you know I went through a lot of charts today, this afternoon. Um, I, I think the market is still very very strong. I do believe you still can find some really good pockets of strength to take advantage of. But when you start looking at names uh, like NVIDIA, I mean, ridiculous. Uh, and what Amazon did today, although it's not near parabolic, and today's candle basically took out three days worth of selling, including earnings. When you talk about Tesla, and, and the, I mean, Tesla, I mean, look at this move. I mean, just, just absolutely insane. Uh, Google today had a really, really strong move as well. But when you start looking at semiconductors and cloud names and, 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 and a lot of different bios and this, that, and the third, you start looking and you say, well, damn it, where the hell is the meat on this bone? Right. And, uh, you know, I think tomorrow is Friday. OK, I, I'm still, you know, I still like some names. Right. I went through some charts. I, I definitely some like some names and maybe you know, if Google, uh, you know, reclaims the top of the supply zone, maybe gets a second wave up. OK, I, I like Google. I'm watching Google. Uh, maybe if Amazon, because again, these are not extended names yet, right? Maybe if Amazon clears out this Bollinger Band, maybe it has one more day. Okay, fine, cool. And again, you could do a lot of damage with Amazon and Google uh, being on your focal list like we had today. Uh, but again, you, I start looking at a lot of names that usually I wouldn't you know, really watch, okay? Uh, but they're starting to look pretty good. I mean, Lucid is still getting a lot of call buying, right? A lot of call buying three days in a row of higher highs, higher lows, off the five-day moving average and listen maybe if it starts taking out this linear regression line you know and some good option flow comes in okay it could get my attention uh, a name like CERS uh, had a really really big move yesterday you know relax today maybe goes one more day twice maybe gets a third day okay it's definitely warranted my attention uh, even a name like Rant Lamb Research right that has not had a, a big run-up it's not exactly the easiest stock to trade but at least you can see it's attempting to come out of a range right you could definitely see the potential on the off coming off the bottom so when you look at Tesla Nvidia and you know you know names like that it's very tough right very very tough maybe into dips into rising 60 minutes support uh, again ridiculous amount of call buying still coming into the name but as I've always said be safe and then sorry so again if there is a pull in the market again I'm not saying it will again I'm just just trying to be more uh, conscious right be more conscious of kind of how many charts I saw to have this value versus how many charts are overextended so I'm kind of being a little bit more prudent going into tomorrow's session uh, although I am still you know, still buy bias. I, you know, there there are names we could definitely take advantage of the downside. I mean, Netflix had a nasty reversal today and lost the ten day moving average. If you have, uh, if you've been watching this broadcast, you know the ten day moving average is the birth of the trade to the upside. Well, if it confirms to the downside, well, it's the birth of the trade to the downside. Roku, uh, you know, had a nasty move on earnings. Okay, maybe earning, maybe this thing gets stuffed into supply, rolls over, starts taking out today's low, starts moving lower as well. So I, I definitely want to be more conscious of some names that are weak that didn't participate especially had nasty rollovers uh today uh you know like a roku net like a netflix again there's obviously some some still a uh, little bit of meat left on the bone to the upside but but again I, I i believe in this business and i've been saying this for years is the long game right is the long game so even if you miss and the video continues to go higher and and, and tesla on strength continue goes high and it's possible right very very possible again i'm still very very a big believer of this bull market Market. But again, at some point, when you got a linear, linear move in the queues, right? Let me show you guys. 
when you have a linear move in the Qs and they hit the upper Bollinger Band. This is the first time they hit the upper Bollinger Band since one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days. We're talking about almost two weeks. Tomorrow will be day nine. So you're talking about almost two weeks of testing any type of supply uh, in any healthy market. Any market that's going to have staying power going more than two, three weeks needs some sort of rest. This is just common sense. Uh, it needs rest. It needs a little bit of distribution. It needs to kind of get its wind you know, underneath its sails because eventually even the biggest bulls okay, are going to turn around and say, Yo, I can't buy this, man. How can, how can I buy this? The stock has moved up 200 points in the last five days. How can I possibly even look at this thing? And that's not what you want, right? You don't want that uh, personality that coming in from the even the biggest macro bulls talking about too much too fast. Let's get, you know, let's take the money when we want to, not the when we have to, and kind of reassess. And especially tomorrow's Friday. Again, nobody's going to start going tomorrow guns blazing after, you know, after the queues just put up a, a, a candle from, where is it, from from 269 to two for 400, in, right, in three weeks. Nobody's going to start turning around and say, I need to get long today. Well, what happened to the other 40 points in the last three weeks of the queues? So just for me, again, again, I'm, you know, t take my advice. Don't take my advice. Just just one humble man's opinion. I think we're a little extended, okay? A little bit extended. I'm still bullish tomorrow on certain select names coming off the bottom, but I'm definitely now more conscious of some names that we could take advantage to the downside in case there is an aggressive pull. And again, the last thing you want to do is be caught without a chair. Every great market, every bullish market that I've ever traded, whether it was the internet craze or even this last run, you forget about this last one, even the run from 2009, right? 2000, excuse me, from 2000, yeah, 2009, the bottom of the mortgage crisis all the way up to 10 11, right? There was a phenomenal run. It definitely had pockets of very aggressive selling, so the market could kind of reset. Will that happen tomorrow? I don't know, right? I don't know. The only thing we can do is have an opinion based on data, trust our opinion, trust you know everything that got us up to this point, right? That put us in the position that we are in control. And again, at the end of the day, isn't it all about control? Isn't it about being a day early than a day late? Isn't it about recognizing the signs before the signs hit you over the head? And the moral of the story is, even if I'm wrong tomorrow and the market continues to go higher, well, what's the worst case scenario? We buy stocks that are not overextended. I just meal, right? Not the end of the world. But if we are right and stocks gap up, get stuff into supply, at least we have some plays uh, to the downside that we could take uh, advantage of. So let's talk about today's uh, today's action again. What are you going to say? So Amazon, uh, Amazon went absolutely nuts today, uh, absolutely nuts from pillar to post. And when I tell you, it it didn't have a retrace today. Okay. It did not have a retrace. It's very rarely you see uh, Amazon or any stock, okay, not named Tesla, uh, you know, go up without even taking out the previous 60 minute candle on the way up to test. Amazon never came even close to taking out a, a previous 60 minute low, not even close. It, the, the closest it came was I think 25 or $30 from the previous candle. That's how strong the name was. Uh, 3397 3400 right off the gate they came for the 3400 the 3500 weeklies uh, Amazon went absolutely nuts definitely the trade of the day um, I mean definitely so here is here is this whole channel here right 33 uh, 97 3400 I mean this thing just went nuts a hundred points look this is what I'm talking about here's the first the first candle was 60 right the next four candles, the next five candles, never took out the previous candle. Look at this. High, higher, 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 right? Blah, blah, blah. So ridiculous move, uh, ridiculous move on Amazon. Uh, Netflix, I was actually watching to the upside, got absolutely destroyed. Cisco is complete dud. You know, I think, you know, it never reclaimed the $58 number. This is still the number. I'm just surprised that it didn't. Uh, Zoom, nice little pop on Zoom. Uh, 287 needs to build. Uh, put up a four or five dollar candle. Nothing crazy. Uh, put up a four or five dollar candle. Here's the ninety. Uh, here's the eighty-seven. This whole channel here went right to supply uh, at ninety-one. Again, four or five bucks before uh, it got rejected. Again, there's no surprise. We you know we talked about. Hey guys, you know two ninety-one, two ninety-two. Start making some sales. 
it's going into supply. Again, you, you need to know where supply is or you're going to be trading completely blind. Uh, Airbnb was a nice nice move. They had, had some pretty good earnings after the close. Uh, a couple of days ago, they came for the 82.50 uh, weeklies. This Today, they came for the 87.50s ahead of earnings. Nice earnings here. Uh, 177 needs to build. Uh, it traded up to 87 uh, after hours, but that's not what we were concerned. We were concerned basically uh, with this whole channel here right, this whole channel here of 77, you know, put up a couple of bucks, right, a couple of dollar move, a two and a half dollar move, and then obviously it's having a pretty good, uh, it had a big, big pop initially uh, after the close, now it's just kind of uh, going sideways. Uh, TDOC never gave a second entry, popped to 56 and change, never gave a second entry, went straight down. Uh, AI stopped right at 50, never gave a second, never even gave an entry. Uh, here is Amazon. Google was awesome as well. Okay, Google is great as well. Uh, 2960 rejected twice needs to build. I don't remember the last time I saw size buyers come in on Google, but size buyers came in on Google nonstop for the 3,000 calls. Uh, 2960 was a sneaky pivot on Google, right? 2960 was right over here. You see these two candles? 2960, 2960. So once it finally got above the 2960, it took out 2973 and went right to 3000. You know, just a really, really strong move on Google and Amazon. Here it comes Airbnb, take on the way up. Phenomenal move. Uh, phenomenal move on, on Amazon. You know, nice move on Airbnb. Uh, here comes, you know, here comes Google, right? So 2960, 2973. Just phenomenal. It's a really, really good, strong session. Um, there was a sneaky pivot coming in on Tesla that never confirmed. So the moral of the story is, uh, here's the last move. Feel free to book the, all the runners. You can trade at the 30, 3498. Um, yeah, I mean, so look, look we, we, the market's been in a great run. The pivots have been phenomenal. Uh, Technology has been an absolute beast. But at some time, again, I don't care how strong of a high performance vehicle you have. I don't care what it is, a Ferrari, a Bentley, whatever it is. Okay, whatever your journey choice, your favorite uh, exotic mobile is, you can't drive at one speed. You have to learn to kind of take the step. You take the foot off the gas, relax before you run into trouble. Just one man's opinion. So I'm going to be a little bit more prudent for tomorrow. I'm going to watch both sides of the market. And if we have any type of sides of exhaustion, I'll start looking at like the names like Roku and Netflix for a possible day to uh, meltdown. So guys, have a great night. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow.